Hi America, I'm Cam Rock. Mental health and mental issues are a very serious issue in this country. Did you know that most of our prisons are filled with people who should be in mental uh, health uh, homes because they have mental health issues? Well, I know you're thinking I'm going to make fun of the mentally handicapped. And you're right. I'm a bastard. Anyways, that's the new poster boy for bastard right there. Anyway, anyways, yeah. So, next time you see a mental health person it's like a schizophrenic, don't feel bad. God made those people with mental health issues. And the schizophrenic is just God's way of saying, you know, before there were comics, there were schizophrenics. It's God's way of saying, go on, have a laugh on me. You know, stop, that. don't you, it's not wrong. It's not, don't you, no, don't, don't make that face. Don't, 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 don't call someone and tell them, don't share the video and say that I'm, no, nah, don't, don't do it. Ah, oh, damn it. Anyways, listen. So, <laughs> you know it's true, damn it. I remember I used to work downtown, uh, serious note, uh, St. Louis, and I would see people with different issues every day because it was uh, right next to a, a homeless shelter. And uh, on a serious note, prisons and homeless, you know, shelters are filled with mostly people who have mental issues. When I work in there is what inspired me to do so many of those videos that I did back in uh, 2013 uh, about like the basic needs program and just helping these people out. Because uh, during that time period, uh, I left the military. I was living downtown St. Louis with a girlfriend of mine. And, uh, you know, with my girlfriend at the time, I mean, not a girlfriend of mine, but my girlfriend at the time. And, um, well, uh, it was a lot of homeless people downtown. Like, every time we went out, and then, you know, I'd be worried about her safety, even though they were fine, they were nonviolent. But, I mean, you know, it was still an issue because you have people who are, have, not just half nots. I mean, they got nothing at all. They're homeless. They live in the street. And they got nothing to do but sit outside and watch us all day. People, they got a place to sleep at night, and people, they got a little money to spend at the corner store. So I'd want to walk up to the store at night, and this and that. You know what I mean? Because I was worried. So, you know, uh, jokes aside, like, I understand that joke. I thought about the joke, and I was like, oh, that's kind of funny and wrong, but that's what makes it funny. It's wrong. And I love comedy like that. But, you know, yes, I know better. And, of course, every comic does. Whenever you look at a comic and go, dude, that was so wrong. You shouldn't have said that. He or she knows. They, they know. Sarah Silverman. Fucking all these people that say, that say shit. That uh, Lisa Lampanelli, I should have threw her out there among the first. Uh, the new girl, my homegirl, Amy Schumer, goddammit. Yeah, when they when they go there, motherfucker, you know, Carlos Mencia, he's another one that would go there. Dave Chappelle, he's another one that would go there on the motherfucker. Quick. Fucking Paul Mooney, nigga, the godfather of doing that shit. And of course, whom he wrote with and for, uh, you know, Richard Pryor. Uh, and everybody. Eddie Murphy, boom, all these people, truth tellers, you know what I'm saying, uh, damn, Jamie Foxx, I mean, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, you got all these great people, Tommy Davidson, David Allen Greer, Whoopi Goldberg, nigga, you know, uh, Roseanne, oh shit, uh, Whoopi Goldberg, minus the nigga part, she's not, she don't like the word nigga, of course, I saw a video where she said that, so I'm respect that, but, you know, I love the word nigga, just because I understand, I see it in a different way, that's it, I just see it in a different way, however, uh, Whoopi Goldberg, uh, genius and uh you know timeless uh just classics legend i mean my god and um <clears throat> who else we got here i wanted to go some more females uh uh my home girl i'm trying to think of her name kim uh kim is it kim or is it ah damn it the sister with the big old titties from the the, the, the second friday movie you know who i'm talking about fine ass brown skin girl black dynamite yeah i think she kim something like, damn it, I, i'm following you on facebook baby i love you baby you bring them big old titties over here, girl. It will be Mr. Nasty Time. Shit, tell you that, goddamn it. Shit, goddamn it. Anyways, so, uh, <laughs> anyways, you know, I thought about that, and I'm like, you know, I wanted to do this joke, but then also use that joke as an excuse, kind of do uh, what my traditional uh, vlogs used to be. But man, spruce it up. I'm, I'm really getting into the comedy vlogs. Now, I used to just kind of get preachy and talk for a little minute. Now I want to throw some goddamn jokes in there, goddamn it. So, you know, because uh, nobody likes a fucking lecture, goddamn it. And my ADD have an ass. If I don't like it, I know you motherfuckers can't like it, goddamn it. No, goddamn it. No. Anyway, 
So, you know, if I had a teacher that was as animated as myself growing up, I'd have got a lot more A's, goddamn. I know that much for sure. Shit, I'd have been like, yo, learning is fun with you know, doctor and I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> Bosco or some shit. I, I, I just tried to make up a weird ass name. Now, let me know if that one's taken. If it is, help a nigga out, damn it. Y'all got to do something to work too. Shit. <laughs> I'm joking. That's actually not your job. But if you help me, I'll give you credit. If you help me name the, the new, I want to make a new character that's like doctor, whatever, that's a crazy, silly ass teacher type character that, you know, teaches you real shit, but is ignorant as fuck when the character doesn't. He or she doesn't, you know. I'll make it a female if I can get something funny enough going and the right voice, and, you know, I don't care. I'll, I'll do it. Because, you know, hey, between Larry David Jr. and Miss Dorothy, right now, Miss Dorothy, on, for me, is winning in terms of the, the funniest shit. Out. I got more Larry David Jr. skits, but Miss Dorothy be I'll be snapping with that Miss Dorothy character, goddammit. And it'd be I'll be hitting it hard. Anyways, that find your mall shit nigga, goddamn. Find your mall and motherfucking blow and goddamn, you know, rap concert. Them motherfuckers just damn. The bitch shat it on Larry David Jr. And he didn't appreciate it. You son of a bitch! She shot on me again! <laughs> she shot on you before Larry David? Yes! Three times already. Damn, Larry, th you let the bitch shit on you, man. For the first two times, she caught me off guard. It was a surprise, you understand? She said she'd give me pussy, and she stood over squatting, and she took a shit right all over my fucking body. <laughs> I rolled over shit all over the bed. It was all over the sheets and everything. It was disgusting. <laughs> If you laughing your ass off right now, goddammit, that is awesome. Thank you. Tell me on Twitter, like, nigga, you was killing me with that goddamn life. <laughs> if it was funny enough to where it needs to be its own separate thing, and you want it to be like a, a something that pops off on your phone when you get messages or a ringtone or whatever, let me know. I mean, because certain shorts that I do are exactly for that reason. Because, you know, they got the programs. You can uh, get the audio off of uh, YouTube vids. So I do want some of them to be bam like that. Hence, I say my name on a lot of them guitar freestyles. I'm trying to do it on all of them if I can, just so that I'm not a no-name guitar player on every goddamn one. I would like for some of the work to live on with my name in it. That'd be kind of nice, but uh, the work lives on it, so I kind of all this important, really. Yeah, no. uh, I guess. Damn it. <laughs> uh, it's not the inventor, it's the invention, is the truth. It's the invention. The invention is what's important. The motherfucker, you know, yeah, we important to family, friends, and the people we fuck. We're important to them. But throughout the pages of history, it's like, oh, that nigga. And, and then the next nigga and the next nigga. What's the invention, motherfucker? What did you do? Oh, well, that was important. Well, fuck. I guess it was shit. Well, damn. Well, who's the next nigga? What did you do? <laughs> shit. <laughs> Oh, that was important too. Well, fuck, all you niggas is important, huh? I guess that's why y'all in bucks, huh? Uh huh. Uh huh. Anyways, so if you agree with me, you know, kick some ideas at me on my Twitter. Thanks for the people that follow me already. Uh, you know, uh, throw some ideas at me when you know, when I talk about the basic needs program. I mean, I'm just giving you a blueprint of what I think would help in homelessness and like fix it. I know everybody. Well, they could just get jobs. I mean, but thing is, is with the economy being not exactly a perfect science. It's not a perfect science at all. In fact, we the farthest thing from the goddamn thing. Hence, we have economic issues and crashes and shit like that all the fucking time. We obviously don't know what the fuck we're doing yet. You know? Ain't it obvious to everybody else? Am I the only nigga going, going this some bullshit? You know? No? I'm the only one? Okay. One of y'all lose, you get laid off tomorrow. And see if you don't agree. Anyways. <laughs> Lose your job and owe a shit ton of money for your college loan still. And then nobody want to give your degree no love. Mm, you might be a great name. But uh, anyway, everybody that got a college degree but like no job for that degree, they looking right now going, motherfucking right. Everybody that done been to 20 interviews and like, you know, if you got a, let's say an associate's or a bachelor's and you go to an interview and motherfuckers with master's degrees is all lined up too. And you like, what the fuck? That's not even fair. You know what I mean? And I'm a good-ass interviewer, nigga. What, you think I just entertain on this thing? Nigga, my interviews is better than this shit, nigga. Now, I'm, I'm making jokes. I'm doing my shit. <laughs> I'm doing all kind of shit to interview. 
I make you know why? Because they are not just judging. They you qual if you get the interview, you're already qualified for the job. They don't need to know. That's just going through the motions to make sure you ain't like crazy and weird. But they really want to know in the interview, am I gonna enjoy being around you every day? I'm at to see you every day, potentially to retirement. And I gotta hire you. Am I gonna be able to be your friend if you stick around or am I gonna hate your fucking guts? So you need to be as non-annoying in an interview as possible. So your social charisma charm and shit got to come the fuck out. And so when it comes to the unscripted comedy shit, a lot of people might wonder, how the fuck you just make up certain shit in one take and you just go for... Because, nigga, I've done a lot of job interviews. And I've done a lot of jobs. You know? When I don't like a job, I have a problem keeping the motherfucker. <laughs> At least in my early 20s, that's how I was. But that and I just bounced around a lot. Early 20s especially. From 18, actually 16, but 18 really. 18, 19, up until about 25, I did a shit ton of jobs. You know, uh, you know. then I stabilized out. Well, actually, we're only 24, 24, 25. Yeah, I stabilized out, got one job, kept it, you know, security guard. Then I did some other shit. And that was when I was finishing my degree, getting my bachelor's. But, you know, yeah, man, you know, I was, uh, you know, I was a hustling motherfucker, man. But, you know. For a while, I was doing all kinds of shit. I sold the lawn care door to door and shit. I uh, fucking, uh, dude, what else? I, I was a loan processor. I was a loan officer. I fucking uh, did the loans from, sold the loans, and I processed the loans, you know. Uh, fuck, dude. I mean, I did a lot of little, you know, unique little jobs. Uh, quite a bit in sales, you know, customer service, collections. I was a repo man at Rent a Center and shit. That was also an account manager, so account manager is the title, right? So I got to pick your shit up, call you about the shit beforehand. I got to deliver the shit. I got to pick the shit up, bring some stuff. You know, the niggas in the store, the manager and the system manager, you know, them niggas rarely, if ever, do shit. Them account manager niggas do every fucking thing. They be hustling. You know, they do. It, it, it's a bunch of shit they supposed to be doing, but, you know, at a lot of jobs like that, they chill and relax as much as possible and get paid. You have to work your butt off hustling and do all kind of shit. It goes. It's the way it goes. Yep, it is, really. And you know what? That's a lot of the corporate world, period. A lot of y'all be like, man, you know, I wonder what does my boss do all day? For certain jobs, not every job. A lot of your jobs, your boss legitimately is busy as fuck, and you know which jobs those are. When you see your boss doing twice as much shit as you, and you're like, how the fuck are you everywhere at once? You helping me, you helping Kelly at her desk, you at Ray's desk, now you at Charles' desk, you over here with Edward now, now you're over Chris. How the fuck? How are you everywhere at once? That's a good boss. That nigga, he or she is hustling their ass off. That's a great boss. And no one beats with you. They take you serious. They respect you. They working with your heart because you're a great boss. You're doing your shit. You're just all over the place. And you're just getting the job done. That's an amazing... I love working for people like that. All of us do. But them people are fucking rare. They are the ones who truly deserve to be managers all over the place. They should manage everything. Them are the true managers of the world. If you've been lucky enough to work for someone like that, if right now you hear this and you go, that exists? Motherfucker, I've been getting fucked all the time. Yes, it exists. There are great people out there who are awesome managers and yeah, they, they exist. Anyways, uh, you know, <laughs> I have worked for both. And you know what? If you got your boss that's kind of doing their thing but they're on the lazy side of things, sorry. If you got a great one, Hey, great. I'm really happy for you, you know. But uh, when it comes to interview thing process, this is what makes a job market. This is what makes basic needs a necessity. That's the unfairness and will always be the unfairness of every job in the job market period. Is It's a matter of personal opinion and preference. It's based on if I like you or not. You cannot get an interview, be an asshole, but qualified as fuck and still get the job in the game. It's a beauty contest. It's a pageant. And if you don't think pageants are fair, then you don't think the job market is fair. Because you're a beauty queen in a pageant, hoping to get hired. And you got to smile and wave and dance and shit. And you got to parade that ass around in the motherfucker. Yeah, that's the job in it. Song and dance. Yeah, puppet. Get it? Yeah, the puppet. See? Makes sense. Anyways, uh, you know. I was another cam rock, uh, whatever the fuck, and truth and comedy and vlog and all that good shit. Uh, like and subscribe and, uh, you know, you know, holla at me. And please don't be offended by the goddamn handicap joke. Please, the mental health joke. I mean, because I have a minor in psychology, so I don't, I, you know, I take it serious. I do. I, I'm very serious. 
and you know I've dealt with depression and stuff like that before myself and you know and everything so I, I take it very serious I really do but a, as a comic you know and I'm just now accepting that in my life right now so I've been doing a shit ton for those of you who've seen my channel years prior damn nigga your comedy is flooding this motherfucker yeah it is I'm finally accepting that dude I was never a class clown for just no reason I'm a fucking comedian so I'm doing it like that uh, you know, I'm accepting it, so therefore I'm willing to put more jokes on my channel. Before, I was just holding it back, so I was like, no, I'm not, I didn't see myself as that. But when I realized I had so many videos where I'm doing jokes, I'm like, fuck yeah, dude, I guess I am a comic, come. Huh? Well, shit, uh, let's do the damn comedy. You know, so now the glove is off, I'm doing the shit, so this is what you're getting, goddamn right. And I'm still doing my music, I love that organic shit, you know. Uh, for those of you who ain't feeling, damn it, it ain't for you. But don't worry pretty soon i'm gonna get uh, my equipment upgraded and then i'll be making uh you know a studio type music for you so all them songs that sound like shit organic to you if you don't like organic you're like no nigga i need the studio verb fuck organic all right i got you i'm gonna make the studio stuff it's gonna be this year too i'm gonna you know save my money i'm gonna you know, upgrade my shit then i'll be hooking you up all right and I appreciate the patience and the motherfuckers are sticking with me through the whole ordeal. Where am I at? 16 minutes. All right, so, uh, hey, much love and respect. Uh, uh, please follow me on Twitter, goddammit. I'll follow back. Let me go and give myself a damn shout-out. Fuck. At Cam Wild. The ad symbol, K-H-E-M-W-I-L-D. That's K-H-E-M-W-I-L-D. And follow me. I will follow you back. Give me time. I'll be hitting the follow limit every fucking day lately because I've been getting good followers. That's awesome. Thank y'all for that shit. You know, I fucking got four times my followers in two, two and a half weeks or two weeks or some shit like that. I went from a thousand to four thousand. God damn. That took me three years to get a thousand. So thank y'all. God damn. That was some amazing shit. For those of you who don't know the Cam Rock Network list real quick, let me tell you, use that motherfucker. Everybody on the list, they either follow back or they got a list full of people of followers that follow back. So use both, and if the people don't follow you back, you know, use, I'm using right now Crowdfire and um, the Unfollow Spy thing website. They both work good so far. It's really both, I'm using both to help me manage, because they both, if you're using the free version, they, uh, you got to like, you got limitations. You can't just delete and unfollow everybody. It's 100 a day that you can, you know, for both of them, that you can unfollow it each day, every 24 hours. Then it's like 50 or 25 people that you can follow that you don't currently follow back. So, you know, but use my list, man, and you'll get a shit ton more followers if you're trying to build your network and your business of your Twitter account. Uh, good luck to everybody. Hey, you know, good luck to me, too, goddammit. I ain't finna leave myself out of that shit. Anyway, uh, but good luck to me, too, and all of you. And, uh, hey, appreciate you, man. Uh, love and respect and peace.